Hey boys and girls, welcome back. Um, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit about what we've been working on here uh, with, the, uh, with the battery tray idea, the, uh, the idea that we uh, jointly did with Sabic. Um, we're going to, uh, we made our own little model. So you saw the little styrofoam model and that, that was fine to give us an idea and it was kind of good that we could get that out in a workshop. But really what we want to do is, how do we make this thing so that it will actually be practical and we can stick it into um, a product? And so what we've done is, uh, Ben's going to give me a hand here. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little section. We didn't do the whole works uh, as far as, we're going to lift this way first. Um, we didn't do the whole works, but you can see here that there's these blue lines. Uh, that basically is going to be repeated all the way down to the bottom. Um, what we did like, uh, about the about the ID4 was that the the system that they had for cooling looked looked remarkably good to us. I, I thought it was uh, well very well done. So we're going to probably repeat that same cooling system, same diameters and everything else. The only thing is it's going to be molded into plastic, or uh, let me rephrase that composite because this is not plastic isn't really even a word. Um, this is this is a composite that will be able to be retarding fire, uh, preventing, uh, sorry, preventing uh, intrusion. Um, everything that, that you saw with the aluminum, this should be able to do. So the, the top kind of looks like this. The, uh, you can see here that we use the same connectors. Remember when I was talking about the Ford, I, um, I didn't really like their individual connectors. I like this one better. I don't know why they've got so many connections or so many screws here, but we'll redesign that for a customer later on. The inlet and outlet, uh, you may have noticed, is at this end of the, uh, this end of the, of the, uh, the system. And um, right here is where we're gonna probably put the same inlets and outlets. But these will be, uh, these will be normal attachments that will, um, will be uh, glued and screwed probably into the existing, into our mold, if you, if you like. As far as strength and whatnot is concerned, Let's have a look at the bottom here. Um, we've done a, a number of different uh, structural members. And what I've chosen here is uh, something that's very, very similar to what we did uh, for the uh, wing box on, um, on the C-17. Uh, and also, or not the wing box, sorry. On the C-17, it was the, um, it was the um, what do you call it, ramp, the loading ramp. And we used the same thing on the, uh, on the 787's um, wing box. So we know that this is quite strong and we know that this will probably handle a load, but we'll still, when we design it, when we engineer it, we'll, uh, we'll certainly go through all the CAE tools that we need to in order to make this happen. So if you remember, the, uh, the, the cells that, um, that uh, uh, the guys at Volkswagen are using are about this size. And one of the propositions that we had for, for Volkswagen was to go to something that would be twice as big. So if we, here, let's go over here. If we uh, kind of pretend uh, that we can, uh, we can see how all this stuff would be cooled, what we're, what we're thinking is that <clears throat> we, would, um, we would take a double row of their batteries and, um, and they would be basically all kind of like glued together and then glued to the bottom of the um, glued to the bottom of the battery tray. Now, why why would I want to do that? Well, at the end of the day, I don't want this thing to leak, and um, I want to make sure that I want to make sure that it stays cooled. So, by taking these products here, let's put one in that looks a little straighter than that. So, by putting all these products together and gluing them together, similar to what um, similar to what Tesla is doing with their um, uh, uh, 4680 battery cells, by putting them close together like this and then supplying an adhesive to glue them to the, to the base, now what we're getting is we're getting cooling from the bottom, which is kind of like what I want, and, um, and I'm getting probably a smaller package. As you can see, we built this to same as, uh, as what the ID4 had, but I'm thinking we could probably go like that. Now we can either add extra space for a crush zone or we, could, uh, or we could make the batteries bigger. Either way, this could kind of uh, be the right way to go 
we think, uh, could be a good way to go if you're using pouch style batteries. So, but not everybody is going to be having the same, um, the same outlook as what, as what, um, as what we've suggested. Um, there are many different ways. And one of those ways is to use a battery pack like this. If we did that, I think what we'd have to do is we'd maybe have to have one sheet of, um, of aluminum that would, uh, would interface with this because these are too hard to package like that. So, but we could make that happen. But let's look at the other option that you've got. Okay, now Ford and lots of other people, they decided that they were gonna go with longer batteries. And you can see right here that um, that kind of a style could work really well here. This is a model off of the uh, battery pack that you saw in the uh, Model Y. So by putting it like this way, you can see that, hmm, how many of these could we get? So one, two, three, four, and again, I wind up with crushed stone at either end. I like the idea of going with the longer ones. I think that uh, I like Tesla's, uh, Tesla's approach to that. But by the same token, I also like the ideas that we came up with on the, um, <clears throat> on the brainstorming session. And that was to create a tunnel, a tunnel that would go through giving us battery space, but also a tunnel that we could use for interconnecting and um, the uh, communications. So remember how these were all kind of like uh, daisy chained together Okay, which we thought was a good idea. Daisy chain together. And then their communication cable from over there through to make sure that battery management is, uh, is being taken care of. Um, I, I just thought I'd uh, give you a quick little update about what we're thinking about um, as far as this type of a, an idea. And I will tell you that we're also looking at some of our smaller uh, customers um, I don't have permission from everybody, but Archimodo said that, um, you know, we can talk a little bit about them. And I think that this might be something that could make a big, big, giant difference in the Archimodo approach to the three-wheel vehicle. With that, I'd like to say thank you again for tuning in. Um, we'll keep you in touch with what we come up with on this idea and uh, others that are coming down the pike. And uh, again, uh, I... <laughs> I will tell you, it's plenty hot in this, in this building today. Uh, I, think that, um, I think that today um, um, is, a, is a good day. Um, I know that um, I was kind of disappointed that uh, Biden didn't, uh, didn't mention Tesla, who actually led the parade. I realize he's got obligations uh, to, uh, to his supporters, but um, I think that that was a faux pas um, that hopefully will be rectified. Anyhow. It's a good day for EVs. Um, I, think that, uh, I think that things are progressing nicely. This is how we're gonna get into production faster. We'll be able to make uh, his, his goal of 2030 and maybe my goal of 2028 for 50% on, uh, on the other side of ice. So anyways, thanks a lot. We'll see you. Thank you, bye-bye.